munchkins and bears alike, it's me Munchie and welcome to a little vlog. Today I am going to be doing three adoptions. So we got two hamsters going out for transport, one's getting adopted today. And so that is what I'm currently doing. We are in the pet room right now and I'm recording on my phone. So thank you guys so much and let's quickly get started here. So what I am doing is we got little bear and I already took his name tag off. The little bear is in this enclosure here. I'm going to be taking him. And then over on the other side, we got Coral, which I can see is coming out, and Jack-Jack. So I'll have to go grab those guys here in just a second. All right, so now I have them all inside of their carriers here, as you can see. We got Little Bear, Jack-Jack, and Coral going out. Coral's got the big one because, of course, ladies need bigger. <laughs> uh, well, at least their activity levels are much bigger. But anyways, this is them. They're going to be going out today. So, like I said before, we're doing Little Bear's adoption, and then we're going to do transport services for these two right here. So they will be going to their forever home today, but they need to be transported further than what I am capable of. Alright, so we're in the car, and what I like to do the most is put them in front here, because in the past, unfortunately with these ones, uh, they've been able to pop open the lid. So, for safety as well, I always... Buckle them up. There we go. This is actually kind of proving to be a little difficult with one hand while trying to talk to you guys, so hope you appreciate it. But anyways, these guys are now safe and secure, and we're gonna be driving with them just for a little bit. Hamsters stress very easily when it comes to driving, but some of them don't always. Some of them may. So I got a lot of their bedding in there so they can transfer over to their new homes. So I gotta get on the road now or I'm gonna be late. I'll see you guys in a little bit. Hello everyone. So I have just done the adoption and the transporter. So I'm actually in a different city now. I drove a little bit of a ways out because we were contacted by an employer of Petco that says that there is a breaky hamster at this location. Now you might not hear that I use this term before or talked about this type of animal before but it is common at our rescue. We have been seeing an increase of short face hydro hamsters, which might not be hydro. Hydro indicates that there's water on the brain, but this is indeed a short face where they have brittle teeth, they have issues with their teeth, and they have to be put on a special diet, which a lot of the times, Peco and Petspar is just not aware of these things, and their employees are just not aware. Brachy and hydro hamsters are because of bad genetics, bad breeding, and skipping on breeding practices. So today we are actually going to be taking a hamster and hopefully implementing it in the rescue, getting it the surgery it needs, because Petco will not do this for this hamster. So that's why we're here today. So let's go see the hamster. <sighs> I'm back in the car and we have little girl with us. So I double checked inside and she is missing her bottom teeth. There is one that's broken off. You can see the root, but this is her. You can tell she is a breaky. Yes. Look at her. Look at her. So what happened was the person uh, at this location contacted our rescue mentioning that they have one in need of hamster. And these guys, unfortunately, they will not get help from Petco. Petco won't have surgery. Petco will not give them mushy, wet food. It's just kind of against their thing. And so they call this because we are kind of like their last hope. Now this, I just want to make a note here. Yes, we are purchasing them. We are getting either them put up for adoption or getting them discounted because of cosmetic imperfections, um, which is sad that Petco would say that. And they've actually said that to Banana. There was a cosmetic uh, imperfection when they were rehoming a banana to the previous adopter before landing at our rescue and becoming our mascot, AKA also a foster fail because we were keeping banana. I love banana. So this 
is much different than going out and saying, oh my gosh, these guys are in very small cages in the pet store. I have to go save them. That's not really saving them. And there is going to be some sacrifices here where unfortunately, in order to get an animal out, you do have to pay. It sucks. I hate it, but that's the way it is. These guys would not get help otherwise. So our thing here is that we help out medical emergencies. So if there is an animal at a pet store that is in need of medical and the place will not provide it, we will step in, especially when asked. So that is the case for her. And so guess what? I am going to another Petco driving further down south and I am going to be seeing three brachy hamsters. Yeah. So let's hope that they're there. Let's hope that I can identify them because with her, she's very young and hard to identify at first, but you could definitely tell when you look at the side that she has a short face, but it's not as severe as Banana and not as severe as Blossom, which we just got at the rescue, but she definitely looks like more of a bunny. <laughs> so now we have another hamster that we have to keep that tradition going with the bee name. So who are you gonna be, Bouncy? Anyways, I gotta get driving now. See you guys in a little bit. That's not a male Chinese. What is this? What is this? You're not male Chinese. Oh. <laughs> they actually run five to 10 miles a night in the wild. So they're a little bit restless. Eating. Hey guys, so just got home. Uh, the reason why I did not film at the second location was because of the location of which it was. And I was in a parking garage. You guys are probably where that parking garages for females is not so great, especially in areas such as this one. So there is a bunch of shady characters around. And so I am back at home now and I have them here. And so we only found at this location one out of three. There was two that kind of looked like they might have been squished, but their teeth were perfectly fine and growing. But in this situation, I found one that is indeed a brachy hamster. So we got him here today and I'm going to go set him up inside, but I got them both in the bag here. So yep, I'm home and I'm safe and I'll introduce them to you here momentarily. My dear, come on out. Oh, sorry. Get your food momentarily. Just check out your new digs. Mm -hmm. I'll take this and go all the way around. Yeah. There you go. All right, and here's the little boy which you guys can get at least a better view on. I know I haven't really showed you guys. Oh, hi, bud. Yeah, you can definitely tell. Are you tired, bud? You tired? Hi, sweetheart. Hi, and he's also shiny too, so he might actually have a little bit of satin in him. But he's a very unique coloration. Hi, sweetheart. You're tired, I know, from the long trip. Look, I, I see you went wee wee a few times, so. My dear, you probably are hydrated, dehydrated. There you go. And he's home. <laughs> there he goes. Now I wasn't trying to do a green theme, but <laughs> you could probably see by what we have in here, it's like all green, including his bowl. Now I need to make new wet food. So we're gonna do that right now because I used up the last of it last night and usually I like to make it fresh, but since we got two new bracky hamsters, then I have to go and make some because I would like them to get food in themselves right away because for our bracky hamsters, unfortunately, they have brittle teeth they probably cannot eat hard food very well, so it's a good idea to just get them in. Um, so I'll show you guys what I'm doing here and how I make that. But I use Wendell's Wonder Formula. 
so anyways, this is his setup right here. And the rescue is plum full, so that's why we don't have a lot of ooh exciting things. And I have to go actually take care of the other enclosures that we just rehomed the hamsters. Um, so I need to take care of the cleaning duties of Little Bear's cage, of Coral's cage, and of Jack-Jack's cage. So the items in those cages will definitely be used for further hamster keeping. But for now, this is just what I had on hand. Yes, somebody asked me about this. If this was 3D printed, yes, it is. So, <laughs> uh, and then we got the big KT tube that opens up here. And then these, which unfortunately the opening is small, but at least it gets bigger as it goes in. And then of course we're gonna have to name him. And I already think I know of a name for her, um, the one we just put away, and that's Bellatrix because I'm just trying to keep the B names for our Bracky hamsters. <laughs> so we got Banana, Bunny, Blossom, Bellatrix. And now this guy needs one. Who are you gonna be? Who are you gonna be? Baymax? Oh my God, Baymax! <gasps> Guys, we found a name. <laughs> You're Baymax. Oh, it's a Baymax. Oh, you kind of look like one. Okay, Bellatrix and Baymax. It's been decided. All right, everyone, so this is how I make my Bracky hamster food. Basically, we have grounded powder here for the Missouri Rat and Mouse Lab Block. We have the coconut oil virgin right here, which we will be melting in the microwave without the lid on. We got cricket powder. Um, we have chia seeds. We got the yeast, the little flaky yeast. We also have to have baby food in here, as well as puppy milk replacement, where cats are surrounding me because they think it's feeding time, but it's hamster time. So we're gonna be starting on that. So first, this is basically my routine. Get some of that, pour it in, pour it in, perfect. And we also have to add water too. But right now what I do is I take this, and I put this in the microwave because right now it's all solid here. All you're not supposed to be on the counter. About a minute and 20 seconds. Anyways, this is brand new yeast because I ran out of yeast. And basically, as you can see there, really nice. Just go ahead, take my tablespoon, plop it in. Now, you're supposed to be technically doing this in an order, but you know, it's all the same if you mix it up correctly. Take my baby food here, my organic baby food. We got apple and kale for this one. And this one actually is a lot better than the Gerbert ones because it squeezes out a lot better. So just baby food alone is not gonna be enough nutrition for these hamsters. You have to have the lab blocks grinded down. We use a blender, by the way. And so when, that is in there. Just gonna take this, start mixing. Rotate and mix. Although oh, it's very powdery right now, I need to actually get the water in here. Then we get to add the other stuff here soon. Well, we can technically add the water right now, so give me a sec. Sorry if I'm a little bit shaky, unfortunately. There we go. Unfortunately, I have been on the road for about four hours today, and so I'm really tired. Three, four, five, six, all right. Trying to know how to speed this up, too. All right, it's all mushy now. But we're gonna be applying more stuff to it here soon. That's all the mush. And then of course, as you can see here, this is now liquefied, so it makes it easier to extract. There we are. I'll keep mixing. Now my least favorite thing about this whole thing is the chia seeds, because you have to get them all nice and warmed up. So technically what I do, where is it? There they are. Take one of my little cups here. Supposed to be one tablespoon of the chia seeds. Pour it in here. And then what I do, since we have a water heater, I just pour hot water in here and let them sit for a little bit. They get very big and mushy. 
So I'll let that sit while I mix this up. And then I gotta add the cricket powder in here. So added protein. Oh, you weren't supposed to see that. Oh no, I've never had that happen before, I swear. <laughs> it's only when I'm filming. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> it's okay. We got the majority of it inside of here. It's fine. It's fine. I'm really tired and I'm going to take a nap afterwards, I swear. All right. Nice, nice and mixed. Got to take this. And there is a scoop inside of here. So we're just kind of round it out. Pop it in there. I swear I'm really not this messy. <laughs> Maybe I get nervous. I think I get nervous in the camera. <sighs> yeah, mix that up and it's starting to look kind of like cookie paste, you know, when you're baking and stuff. It's to that nice little consistency. And I know that you're supposed to put in the chia seeds a lot sooner, but it really doesn't matter as long as you mix it up really well. Plus, I'm very chaotic, so I guess this works out just fine for this video, right? Okay. And then I take a very... What would you call this fork, dear? King Triton fork. And I kind of just mush in the seeds, making sure that they are all nice and mushy. Oh, zoom in on Moxie. She wants to say hi to everyone. Hello, Mox. How are you, Cat? Oh, no. Casper's jealous. Oh no, Casper's jealous. Oh no. Hi, Casper. You may zoom in on Casper. Show everybody. Little cat. All right. Ooh, this is nice and mushy now. So basically what I do, and it's very hot too, so be careful. Basically, plop. It just gets all plopped. And that's kind of what you want it to look like. You want it to look like slimy goo, pretty much. Because it's nice and heated. You gotta make sure you mix it all around. Voila! The goop for the hamsters. Woha ha ha. Alright, guys, thank you so much for watching. I am gonna go feed them now, so here we go. Crap! Alright, so we got the mush. A little mush here and the form it's in right now is fine to feed as long as it's not too hot which it's not <laughs> he should go over there and start eating his mush now if there is any mush left over you want to make sure to discard it because you don't want to be leaving this in here overnight so just be aware of that and you don't want to overfeed them too so that's why i actually don't use like a full rounded tablespoon i use something like this because the hamsters just won't finish all of it however however mister mister right down here <laughs> which he is sleeping right now but banana oh he will finish all of it he will you gonna go eat bud there he is goodness look at how pretty his coat is look at that shine I'm glad we helped him. Now, the lighting really stinks in here, and I do apologize to you guys, but hopefully you can see. Oh, he's eating. <laughs> Look at you. And then, of course, we're going to have um, appointments for the vets to determine if they might have water on the brain and what to do about their teeth. Because for her, uh, she definitely had some teeth break, but for him, his teeth, um, when I checked, looked like they were short, but they had not broken yet, which is good. But of course, when they start breaking, they will start to be misaligned. And sometimes they might even curl, which is what happened to Banana. I will talk about them separately, the ones that I currently already rescued. But for these guys here, I'm glad that I helped them. So let's go on over to the other side. Take this. Sorry for messy room. Don't look at messy room! Oh! <laughs> Anyways, because I am in the process of currently cleaning. Because I just got home and I'm just, I just want a nap. She should be in here. Let's just make sure. She kind of went, yep, she went to bed. So she's in there. She's really tired. So am I, girl. So am I. 
And then we give her some goo. Give me a sec. Gotta get like the perfect shape. There we go. This should be fine. So I've actually added more in here since I last filmed. So she's got more because I found more appropriate Syrian size um, hides and stuff. But I will be adding more once we do have more. And then, of course, I'm going to be adding sand. Uh, Syrians, they don't require sand. It's just an enrichment piece. Um, and it's actually the sand that we have. The ammonia spikes so heavily when Syrians use it. So we don't really like using it for Syrians. But it is required for dwarfs because they use that. Especially Roboroskis. But anyways, she's in here for now. A letter B. And thank you to the Petco employee who contacted us. I won't use names because I just don't want to get people involved that maybe don't want to be named and I understand for safety reasons but thank you so much and I you probably can't see but I place that right over there but this is just temporary right now because the rescue is completely plumb full of a bunch of enclosures right now but what I would typically like doing for a setup like this is actually putting in a bunch of ledges and heights so I'm going to be keeping an eye on her because I don't want her to be like constantly climbing and I do need to clean some ledges out first before another hamster uses them because the person that was in here before I cleaned this enclosure out was Coral and she had some ledges she climbed up on and bendy birds and, and stuff so I need to actually get some more things situated here but since this is a rescue and I'm just using whatever I can I try my best to give everybody what they typically would need appropriate size wheels appropriate size place sometimes we don't always have the luxury of doing it in like the biggest form possible but again I hope you guys appreciate the efforts that we do here at the rescue so thank you guys so much for today and for watching this little vlog and for the adoption and the rescue intake Oh, and one last thing. They don't get chew toys in here because they have brittle teeth. So thank you guys so much. If you liked today's video, hit like to show support. Comment down below with anything you'd like to say. And subscribe if you're new here and would like to become a part of the Munchkin family. Take care, everybody. See you next time. Bye!